Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and my space. For those of you who are new, my name is Raquel and those of you who are coming back, I'm so glad. I love having you guys return to my videos and I love all the um, good comments and the support and um, any way that you help my channel, I greatly appreciate it. All right, so this is not a tarot reading as you can tell by the title. <laughs> This is a new moon astrology reading, okay? Um, your rising sign is the most important sign for um, the moon cycles because it sets the tone of your entire chart and it tells you what house the moon is activating. So, when you when i get into the astrology portion where i go through the signs um please check out your rising sign first as that will be the most accurate then your moon sign because we are talking about the moon here and then your sun sign these energies will play out will be around you um these are general energies because everybody's chart is different we have different planets in our houses so um you know these are just the general energies that are going to be in the air for those signs okay um now the if you want to skip what I'm about to say, which I, I, I don't think you should because you should know what's going on. But if you would like to skip and go to what this means for you, um, I have the timestamps in the description box as well as the comments below. I have notes here, so um, I will be pausing the video every once in a while to check my notes. That way I make sure I'm delivering all the information to you accurately and I'm not staring down at a notepad the whole time. Um, okay, so the Aquarius new moon. Well, if we think of the energy of Aquarius, it's the star card in tarot and it is the king of swords. So Aquarius brings this hope, this luck, this wish fulfillment, this stepping outside of your comfort zone to um, go after and chase your dreams. Uranus rules, well, Aquarius rules the 11th house and Uranus and Saturn both rule the 11th house. The 11th house is all about community, the world, how you communicate with um, people on a global scale. It rules technology, innovation, invention. Um, and Uranus is all about freedom, rebellion, breaking down structures to um, reconform a new structure. Uh, they're all about freedom. So it's about this new moon is bringing us enlightenment on our what we want to set, the intentions we want to set for this year. They may not be the same intentions that we had last year. They may very well um, change because Uranus is now direct and um, there has been some unexpected things probably pop up for you. If there was some unexpected things that popped up for you, please let me know in the comments below. Um, these unexpected things happen out of the blue and they are quite shocking. But um, with new moon energy, that's all about setting the intention, right? Setting the intention so that you can bring new things into your life so that you can take on new endeavors. So with it falling in Aquarius, we're reevaluating and our dreams, our goals, our wishes, our desires in different in different areas of our life, depending on where that moon falls in in your chart. Um, we also have Venus in Pisces. We have Venus in Pisces. So this is bringing... Um, and it's squaring Mars in Sagittarius. 
It's squaring Marge in Sagittarius at 13 degrees. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to I'm going to talk more about that um, a little bit later. But right now, I just want to let you know that with these energies here, it's all about refocusing our goals. It is the first new moon of the year. So the intentions that you're setting are very important this new moon on Friday, the 24th, which is tomorrow. Um, it's also, the 24th is also the Chinese New Year. And what 2019 was about, 2019 was the year of the pig in the Chinese Zodiac. The pig is all about studies, intellectual things, learning. Um, if you had a certain goal in mind and you wanted to be a certain thing or be a certain somebody or take on a different career, 2019 was all about learning your soul's purpose, learning learning that that career or that path that you wanted to go down. Well, 2020, if you take two and two and put it together, that's four. In numerology, that means stability. 2020 is clear vision. So having clear vision on stability, okay, on where we want to go in our life and how we can create a more stable foundation for ourselves. The rat. So <laughs> the 24th is the beginning of the Chinese New Year. And this is the year of the metal rat. All right. And if we think of metal, you know, you can think of like coins and metals, pliable and stuff like that, right? So it's about abundance. It's about stability. Metal is stable. So it's taking what we learned last year and applying it this year so that we can have a more stronger foundation so that we can add to our financial stability, our 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 love, stability, whatever the case may be, wherever the moon may fall. Um, hold on a second. So the rat, the rat is the first in the Chinese zodiac. It's the first sign in the Chinese zodiac. And if we think of first signs, we also think of Aries, right? Because Aries is the first sign in our zodiac. It's also the ruler of the first house, which is self. The rat also thinks of himself, how he can get stability, how he can create himself, right? So this year is a year about putting yourself first. Okay, it's about worrying about your own business and not about the business of others. This way you can set yourself up for success for the next 12 years. Okay, so this year's energy is about passion in the things we undertake passion, our drive, our motivation to get that success that we need. The metal rat loves freedom, enjoys freedom, okay? And I think this is funny because it's coming, the Chinese New Year is coming on the Aquarius new moon. And what is Aquarius about? It's about freedom. It's about hope and inspiration. And these two energies combine together. Um, I think, you know, with the Chinese Zodiac and the, and the Western Zodiac, I feel like this is a good, powerful new start for our, our, our next phase of our lives, our next cycle of our lives. Um, Aquarius rules the 11th house of community, of the world, of how we talk, technology. So you might see some new things popping up in technology because, you know, Aquarius is all about innovation. Um, 
So use your passion to make your own special mark on the world, okay? Whatever you're passionate about, whatever you've been learning, whatever really gets you going, apply that this year and focus on that because that's going to bring you the stability and the success that you need in the areas of life that you choose to use it in. This is a year of moving forward without regret, all right? Renewing your ambitions, your strategies, taking unique approaches to your endeavors. This is a great year for financial opportunity as coins are made from metal and it is the year of the metal rat. Um, make sure you are going over fine details though. Make sure that you are investing your money wisely and you're looking at the fine print, all right? Because if you think about it, rats do steal, right? So you want to make sure that all of your bases are covered. Look out for yourself. Um, use the energy of Saturn being in Capricorn because Capricorn is all about, you know, working for success. They do it and they do it methodically. They go slow. They work. They understand that you have to go slow in order to get to the top. You have to build and use your wisdom and use it right and use it in the right, in the right, you know, areas to make sure that all your bases are covered and that you get to the top. Okay. This is a year to take action, to take action. Like I said, 2019 was all about studying. Um, hold on. So in basic terms, this is, it's a year of applying past knowledge of what you've been passionate about and what you've been studying to setting up for your future, using that knowledge now and really taking the action, going for it, doing it in your own unique way, your own innovative way. All right, so now I'm gonna get into the astrological part of it, all right? So we've got the moon squaring Uranus at two to four degrees. Um, this is about partnerships. This is about um, new social circles. It's about the um, community as a whole new beginnings in all of these areas, uh, wishes, hopes, dreams. Some of you might have already seen how you can put forth your passion into the world. You see that light, you see that hope, you see that glimmer, and now it's about moving forward. Nervous tension might be might come up around dreams and around self-value, around money, around your possessions, about what's going to happen in the future. You, it's very, very, very common to get um to get worrisome around this time. But it's requiring with that Aquarius-like energy, it's requiring you to have faith, to um to surrender, to to take to surrender to the process and take action, to make that wish, to whatever intention you set, this new moon has the potential to bring you very good luck in the future. Um, unexpected events might come up. They might just come up out of the blue. Weird, weird, because we're talking Uranus here. Weird, quirky, I never thought of that. I never thought that would happen. Might come up out of the blue. This is all, you know, antiquitous to the Uranus-like energy, right? Because we're paving a way for freedom. So then that way we can be free to be our true authentic selves, to live in our passions, to create that stability that we need to get back on track with our lives, all right? It is important at this time to stay calm and centered and to really, you know, just think, let your mind wander, let your creativity fly, you know, on how to best navigate this new endeavor that you've got going on, whatever whatever endeavor or endeavors that you do have going on. Um, fixed signs, because Aquarius is a fixed sign, fixed signs are most likely to be affected during this um, 
during this new moon, whether it's whether you're putting positive, if you're putting positive energy out there, it'll probably be a positive return. If you put negative energy out there, it's going to be a negative return for you. But the fixed signs have the most energy during this moon. Hold on, something's beeping in my kitchen. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so then we have Mercury in Aquarius sextiling Mars in Sagittarius at 14 degrees. Supportive energy from Mercury. This is a good aspect because if we think of Mars, it's all passion, it's all fire, it's all, you know, determination and um, <clears throat> spontaneous like energy, right? It's that fire like energy. So <laughs> with Mercury, you know, being in Aquarius, Aquarius is giving Mercury different avenues to think about when it comes to communication, when it comes to, um, you know, resolving issues, problems, conflicts, okay? With it sextiling Mars, Mars, this isn't a good aspect because it's like Mercury will be able to talk Mars down. When Mars wants to go crazy and ballistic or crazy passionate about something, Mercury comes in and talks Mars down and says, let's take a logical approach. What ideas can we come up with? How can we put this passion into action? Okay, so this is a good energy to have. And the most people that are the people that are going to be mostly affected by this are Geminis, Virgos, Aquarius, Aries, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. You guys will feel this energy the most. Um, it's helping you get your passions into action. All right, so <laughs> much uh, more sexier side. We have Venus going in to Pisces. Well, Venus is in Pisces, but it's sextiling Jupiter in Capricorn at 13 degrees. This is also a good placement. Pisces, Libra, Taurus, Capricorn, and Sagittarius can harness this energy really well. This will go good for you guys. Um, this, all you got to do though to harness it is go with the flow. Go with the flow. Do not um, put up any resistance. Be the silent leader. Be a silent leader here, okay? Pisces and Capricorn people, you're going to be blessed with love. Blessed in the love department, blessed in the love department. That's all I got to say. Um, Jupiter is blessing you with love and money, so pay attention to that. Um, other signs, you might... Okay, other signs, you might be watching it, it might be happening around you, or it might be happening to you, but this is the energy that we're playing with here. So love and passion is going to be very, very good, very, very big. There's going to be, wherever Jupiter is, it expands, right? So it's expanding Venus because it's styling it in Pisces. So it's like going with the flow, going with your love life, going with your, you know, your passion, your love. Okay, now here's the juicy one. Here's the juicy one. Okay, so Venus in Pisces is squaring Mars in Sag at 13 degrees. Now, squares are kind of like, uh, they're a little hard, okay? Um, sexual tension will be at an all-time high, okay? Um, anger, frustration, that can also be at an all-time high within your love life, okay? Go with the flow. Go with that Pisces flow, okay? Um, allow what you can do, how you can best navigate this is if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling frustrated, take a step back um, and allow that anger, that frustration to transmute into a more passionate, lovable energy. I know it's hard. It is hard. It's a square, right? <laughs> so... Um, if you can transmute that anger into sexuality, <laughs> I don't know, angry sex maybe, <laughs> but 
but that's what we're talking about here, okay? Pisces, um, the Pisces person might feel, a Pisces person might, or Pisces in general might be feeling a little um, upset or a little disturbed by a Sagittarius person, just to let you know that as well. Um, Venus is the goddess of love, and it squares the, guard, the god of war. So love and war, just make love and not war here, all right? Um, Libras, Scorpios, Pisces, Taurus, Aries, and Sagittarius will feel this the most, okay? Uh, yeah, so just make sure, and you know, with it being the new moon in Uranus, there could be unexpected pregnancy. So if you're turning love, if you're turning war into love, just make sure if you don't want to have that unexpected pregnancy or something like that, depending on what's in your chart and depending on if you can still have kids or not, take proper precaution. If, if, if you do not want kids or if you do want, uh, whatever, <laughs> you understand what I mean, right? Okay. So that's crazy. All right. So that's all I have for the first portion of this. I know it was pretty long, but there's a lot of energies going around. So I'm trying to, you know, fit it all into uh, one episode of this. So now I'm going to go into the signs. And like I said, these are, I did these based off the rising sign because the rising sign sets the tone of your chart. It says where the moon is going to be at in your chart. All right. And depending on where your moon is at in your chart and what aspects there are, it can be different for everybody. But these are the general energies. OK, so Aquarius, we're going to start with Aquarius since it is the Aquarius moon. Right. Um, this is happening in your first house of self um, with your room with your ruling planets, Uranus and Saturn, you can expect a lot of work on yourself in unique ways, in unique ways. If you have Uranus in your first house, this could also apply to you, I feel. Uranus or Saturn, I feel like this could also apply to you because the energy is still there. So the first house is ruled by Mars. So this is the house of self. You might find yourself um, more passionate, more driven about your sense of self, about who you are. You might um, be more bold, uh, putting yourself out there more. Um, and you know, Aquarius is all about freedom and rebellion and gathering knowledge and, you know, coming to that into that one house. So that's a lot going on in there. Um, you expect to have the passion to put forth your unique self to the world. The passion, the courage, the bravery, the boldness. And expect to do this. Um, expect to do, sorry, hold on. Prank caller or scam caller, scammers. I think it's that um, something about I bet you it's that car warranty crap. All right. So um, where was I? Okay. So expect to have passion to put forth your unique self. You'll have the courage, the strength to be that unique Aquarius that you are. Um, do not let your temper flare um, in love situations. You could have that situation where your temper might flare in a love situation. Please do not let that happen. Take on the Saturn-like approach and think before you speak. Um, take the unique approaches to how you are communicating your true self to your partner when it comes to love. Solving relationship and solving relationship problems while still honoring who you truly are. Set intentions to truly let yourself shine this year in the best way possible that is true to your to your soul self, true to your higher self. Okay. So you want to put forth that tension that intention to let yourself shine this year, to yet to let your uniqueness shine, to let your voice be heard, all right? Focus on yourself, this new moon. Self-care, TLC, you know, whatever it is, 
focus on yourself. That is the big thing for you. Be authentic to the true you. Set intentions to have new out-of-the-box ideas. Set intentions to have new out-of-the-box ideas um, in work and play and love. Because this, this will help you out, Aquarius. It will. Mercury sextiles Mars will help you remain calm at this time if you harness that energy. All right? Clear communication is key. Remember to think before you speak. You might find that out of that your out of the boxes ideas are going over well with others. So like your whatever I spontaneous idea you have or crazy loopy idea you have, you might find it well received by your friends, your family, your community, and who you talk to on on social media. Um, Make sure your passions for these new ideas are stated in a positive way. Like going right back to the think before you speak. There might be an un... With the unexpected, there might be, when it comes to yourself, you might find a thing or two about yourself that you didn't know. There might be... Um, something, a personality trait that you didn't know you had, or there could just be the way that you go about life, just, just who you are unexpectedly changes, or you have a different idea or a different viewpoint of yourself. Expect the unexpected in who you are is what I'm saying. For you, Air, or for you, Aquarius, and Aries, an Aries person might be significant to you around this time. They could either help you, you could be, you know, involved with one or getting involved with one or, um, you know, it could be that you have butt heads with an Aries. But whatever the case may be here for you, Aquarius, an Aries might be involved with you somehow during the um, next, you know, 14 days over the the neck, well, you know what I get. I mean, the, over the days of the of the new moon. Now, usually I say three days before the day of and three days after. Um, but I've been hearing that it can last up to 14 days. So <laughs> just to let you know that. All right. So now we're moving on to Pisces. Pisces, this is happening for you in your 12th house, and you are the ruler of the 12th house of spirit and what is hidden, our dreams, our aspirations, right? Um, the things we can't see, other dimensions. Um, the planets that rule this are Neptune and Jupiter, and Neptune is all about beauty, glamour, um, the illusion, right? We all, and you know, Jupiter is all about expansion and spirituality. So Pisces, um, you're the dreamer and you go with the flow and you have a good sensitive heart. So expect some unforeseen drama to arise around you. I don't feel like it's coming from you. I feel like it's happening around you. Your best, best, best um, advice for this is to walk away. Walk away from the drama. You don't need no drama, okay? No drama for you. Um, a hidden thing might come in to light about revolving around friends, relationships, something unexpected that was hidden around friends and relationships. You are blessed when it comes to romance and money as Jupiter brings blessings and expansion. As it is in Capricorn, this can mean a hidden return on some money, maybe a hidden inheritance for some of you. Um, it can also mean I'm sorry. This can also mean a sudden windfall in money. It can also mean a sudden windfall in love. 
It can mean, you know, lovers from the past that you haven't seen in a while that have been hidden from you coming back because Venus is in your sign. It can be hidden emotions or hidden feelings you have for somebody that you didn't know you had coming to the forefront. Um, in your love life, it is better to put that passion that Mars brings um, to your love life in a love, not war type of scenario. Channel it into good sex instead of duking it out with your lover. All right. You might be disturbed or upset by something a Sagittarius might say. So it's best to just walk away from the situation. If you're a Pisces involved with a Capricorn, you can expect this union to be blessed. Um, <laughs> there's a lot going on there for you too. Passionate weekend and weeks ahead as this union is being blessed at this time by Venus and Jupiter and the Aquarius um, new moon. Or if you're a single Pisces, a Capricorn might come into your view. Or you might be feeling um, these new hidden feelings that you had for a Capricorn that you didn't know you had. Um, expect the unexpected to happen in your 12th house. So this could be something spiritual. You could have a spiritual experience. You could have a, um, dreams. Dreams it will be very, very important for you around this time. Um, or a, a, a stranger could be bringing you new information, hidden information, a stranger. Now is a good time to set intentions for love and money. For love and money. You want to set intentions for love and money um, and spirituality. Anything to boost your spirituality to make to put you on that higher level. Um, if you're single, set intentions to find love. If you just recently left a career, set intentions to find a new career it, that will bring that will put you on your higher purpose or on your right purpose. Um, there, if you are a couple, set intentions um, for nothing to be hidden in your relationship, and also, if you have a secret lover, set intentions to come out. You guys might come out as lovers, and it will not be secret no more. So just know that that energy is working for you, Pisces. So for you, um, a Capricorn person might be significant during this time. Aries. This is happening in your 11th house of technology, community, the world. Um, what else? What else is there? Other people's children. Um, so you're ruled by Mars. And the 11th house is ruled by Uranus and Saturn, and it's that Aquarius-like energy, that freedom, that busting out of the box, breaking out of the mold, um, letting your unique self shine, much like, much like Aquarius, but with you, you need to do it on a more subtle scale, not the Mars-like Aries that you are, all right? Make passion instead of war. As Mars is squaring Venus, this could bring up unexpected things in your love life and relationships. It's good to keep your temper at this time and use that Mercury-like energy that is in Aquarius to um, communicate with love, to communicate wisely, all right? using that Saturn-like energy as well. So thinking outside of the box, using that Saturn-like energy to communicate wisely to your partners, not just blowing up, all right? Um, in terms of friendship circles and community, let yourself shine. This is the perfect time to reinvent yourself to the world. 
So if you've been doing like that soul searching and you've come to find new things about yourself, now is the time to express that to the world. Let your unique self shine. All right. Using that Uranus energy. Turn any judgment and anger into understanding and compassion. This is what you are being advised to do. Take judgment and anger and turn it into understanding and compassion. Expect to get busy in terms of love as your sex drive will be high at this time with Venus in Pisces, okay? But make sure you are doing so with integrity. No shady-like dealings, okay? No shady-like dealings, Aries. Make sure you're doing it with integrity so you're setting positive intention so positive return comes back, okay? Um, the Mercury Mars sextile is a positive aspect, especially for you as Mercury is in Aquarius and that is where your moon is. All right. Um, Mars is in set and Mars is in Sag. You will be able to use your drive to bring understanding and peace. Bring understanding and peace as you will be able to see the bigger picture. So you're going to be able to see the bigger picture, Aries, and you're going to be able to understand <clears throat> instead of just looking at the font, the small fine details, you're going to be able to understand the big picture and bring a sense of peace to it um, with peaceful communication. Hold on. And you're going to be able to solve problems by thinking outside the box. Hold your temper. Hold your temper. Use your communication to kind of, to kind of, um, dull that down. Jeez, everybody is like bothering me during this video making session. Hold on a second. Okay. So when it comes to friendship circles, it comes to your community, it comes to, you know, the world in general, you can expect the unexpected here somewhere. And it can come up around you, it could happen to you, um, it could happen for you. Uh, but you could be seeing some notoriety for a job well done. Um, somebody could be asking you to help on a project like out of nowhere and you're like, <laughs> what do I do? You know, um, the unexpected in that way, somewhere with the community, that's where you're going to get your unexpected happenings. Um, channel that war like passion that you have into that new opportunity and make peace. <laughs> All right. That's what you need to know for yourself. It's love, not war for you, for you, Aries, especially when there's upheavals in your love life or in your friendship circles and communities. Um, an Aquarius person could be of some, some significance, some significance. So it could be like your partner, your friend, it could be a co-worker. Um, it could have any type of aspect when, when involved with this, positive or negative. But make sure you're setting your intentions this new moon for um, how you can reinvent yourself in society. Because this is all about reinvention for you. This is about letting your unique self free, your soul self free. So set those intentions to reinvent yourself in society. Okay, so Taurus, this is happening in your 10th house of career and status. If you are a Taurus rising, this is happening in your 10th house of career and status. Um, the ruler of you is Venus, as you well know. Okay, lover, not a fighter, right? Um, <laughs> the 10th house ruler is Saturn and Capricorn. 
All right. So this is all about, and, and, you know, your house is all about money and possessions. So mixing business with pleasure might come about around this, around this, um, Aquarius new moon, uh, but also finding that career passion. Some of you might find that career passion that you need to help out with your home, with your money, with your possessions. Okay. Expect your career and status to be highlighted this new moon. All right. Working hard, taking your next steps seriously. So you're really going to have to think about your next steps. What are you going to do career wise? How are you going to accomplish those career goals? How are you going to climb that ladder like Capricorn does? Okay. With that determination that you have, but that wisdom that Capricorn has. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, you might find yourself suddenly leaving an old job or suddenly starting a new job or getting offered a new job. Um, if you're a business owner, your, your um, career might suddenly elevate. Or it might suddenly de, de or excel or decelerate. <laughs> um, when it comes to love, make passion instead of war as well. Your sex drive might reach a high point this new moon. Make sure you are doing so with integrity and not being shady. Just like I told Aries, make sure you're doing it with integrity and not being shady. Luck around hopes and dreams and what you truly love will be highlighted here. Listen to yourself. Go with the flow with who you truly are. So make sure that you are staying true and authentic to yourself, Torx. All right. Stay away from any drama because that's not going to help you during this, this full, during this new moon at all. It will not be beneficial for elevating you. It could probably de-elevate you. So stay away from it. Do not get involved. Um, let the nasty people duke it out with themselves. <laughs> Don't get involved. Just stay clear of that. Instead, use your drive and your passion and put that, focus that into your work life and your love life. Okay? Expect the unexpected to happen in career and status. If problems arise, think outside the box because we are using the Aquarius new moon here, right? And you will be able to do that. This will gain you the recognition that you need. Set intentions this new moon for your career status and your love life. A Capricorn may be significant for you around this time. And like I said, it could be a friend, it could be a coworker. More than likely it's a coworker if you're in the 10th house, I think. But it could be a friend, coworker, um, lover, it could be, you know, um, a family member, but whatever the case may be here, <clears throat> positive or negative, a Capricorn is going to be um, of significance. All right, so now we're moving on to Gemini. So Gemini, this is happening in your ninth house of beliefs and long travel. Now, Gemini, Mercury rules you. So that's all about, you know, your communication and how social you are and how creative you are and how, you know, how you communicate with others. Your ninth house is of beliefs and higher learning. Your ninth house is ruled by Jupiter, which is all about expansion here. Gemini, creativity, communications, your siblings, you know, um, that's what you're, you're the ruler of the third house and that's what that brings. That's who you are, right? Expect this to highlight your beliefs, your belief system, um, your higher learning. It will highlight your spirituality. 
It will highlight your travel. Some of you might have unexpected travel come along or come up for you. Communication will be um, a key point during this new moon. So harness that, you know, that energy of, you know, Mercury being in Aquarius <laughs> and really um, thinking about things before you speak them. Do do make sure you think before you speak during this time, all right? You have the power to dissolve disputes amongst your friends, in your community, um, and in your love life by being the calm one who get, who sees the bigger picture, whereas before you used, you might used to see the little details of things and not get the whole picture, now you're seeing the whole picture, all right, you're, you're using that Uranus and stepping outside of your comfort zone, okay, and you're seeing the bigger picture. So you would be a great mediator during this time because you are using the Jupiter-like energy and for, for your Mercury-like energy with your, um, yeah, with your Uranus-like energy. But you can do it in the most effective, productive way. If anybody, I'd say, Gemini, you are going to be good at um, laying to rest disputes because you can see that bigger picture, that bigger, broader picture. Um, and you will be able to dissolve tensions um, quickly. Unexpected thoughts or events might pop up in your belief system. So you might be, you might have a spiritual, you might have a paranormal phenomena pop up because this is the house of spirituality and beliefs. So that might happen for you. Um, if not, you might have unexpected thoughts come into your head and you're like, why didn't I ever think of that before? Because you didn't see the broader picture before because you were in the Gemini-like energy, which just focuses on the minute details. So now you have, you can see the broader picture. Um, and you're using that Aquarius-like energy to put your thoughts into communication, into action. Unexpected, um, oh wait. All right. Some may take a sudden change. Oh, and you might take a change in higher learning. You might decide that you want to go back to school to learn how to do that one thing. Or you might decide that, um, or you might get in to the institution that you never thought you would get into. Or you might um, get that mentor that you never thought you were going to get. An unexpected mentor could come in and help you out in a project or help you out with your career, help you out in navigating your career. Um, an unexpected trip definitely might arise, especially if it involves siblings, because you carry that energy of sibling. Um, you're the twins, right? So sibling. Set intentions for higher learning and travel and spiritual or your beliefs. So anything set with ninth, with ninth house energy, like traveling, if you, there's something you always, if there's a place you always wanted to go Gemini and you've never been able to go, set the intention that you want to go there. All right. This is bringing luck. The Aquarius new moon is bringing luck on this. Um, a Sagittarius person might be of significance for you. And now that I think about it, you might be um, breaking up a fight between a Sagittarius and a Pisces. Um, or you might be talking a Sagittarius down. <laughs> um, in matters of love, you will be, will be blessed by Venus and Jupiter if you make passion and not war. All right. All right, Gemini, that's all I have for you. Cancer. Cancer, cancer, cancer. Here we go. All right. So cancer, this is happening in your eighth house of death and transformation. Okay. Um, cancer, you're up, up, up fourth house energy, home, family. 
Eighth house is all about death, transformation, secrets, um, hidden agendas, occult, stuff like that, right? Eighth house is ruled by Scorpio and Pluto and Mars. Scorpio, Pluto, Mars. Um, and Cancer, you're the moon. So the, all those energies are coming and happening in your eighth house, all right? Your eighth house is highlighted in your home and family life, okay? So this is where the transformation, the eighth house, this is where eighth house energy is taking place for you. Um, the chance for you to stand out using that Uranus-like energy um, to get some recognition within your home and family, all right? You may at this time be stepping into uh, the community and working on projects, voicing your opinion. Stay calm and centered at this time, but speak your emotions on a logical scale rather than using anger. A lot of people are getting this, but um, it's with the planet, with the planet. So any sexual tension must be released. Turn your emotion and passion to your partner in a positive way. Some secrets might come to light with where family is concerned. Hidden relatives, um, hidden deeds, hidden inheritances. Um, somebody might be coming back to reconcile with you. A Scorpio might be coming back to reconcile with you. Take the higher road and be the light. Be the compassion and the forgiveness and it will and it will go a long way for you. More unexpected transformation might be taking place in your fourth house because you rule the fourth house. So some upheavals might arise within your home and family situation. Take the mature emotional approach back off until the situation calms down. Use that Mercury in Aquarius-like energy to calmly diffuse the situation, to talk things down or walk away walk away and go with the natural flow of things a scorpio person might be of some significance so whether it's your partner your sibling your mother your dad your family member whatever not not work because this is not this is not a work thing it's going to be within the family so a scorpio person within your family will be of significance Set intentions around transforming your home and your family life. Now, also, I do want to say that you might find things, um, things might surface in your house that were lost for a long time, Cancer. You might find those. Those might be like re something you haven't found or something you've lost, like probably like six or seven years ago, might suddenly just turn up. So keep that in mind. All right, moving on to Leo. Leo, this is happening in your seventh house of marriage and relationships. Your ruler is the sun. The seventh house ruler is Venus. So big, bright light being shine or shown on your love life and your relationships here. Um you are the house of fun and games, so like you are the spotlight social, right? Well, this might be the time for you to take a back seat and let your partner shine, okay? Um, this is about equality, about balancing the scales here. Uh, communication will be key um, because we have the mercury, you know, sex tile is it sextiling yes yeah, sextiling mars so mercury sextiling mars in your seventh house so communication is key here um <clears throat> when it comes to your partners listening to your partner instead of over talking your partner listen to your partner um this time you can expect if you listen to your partner expect revelations about your relationship Ha, you know, having some clarity, some aha epiphany moments. This is Uranus-like energy here as well. So, you know, the unexpected, like I never knew my partner felt that way, or I never knew that my partner was like that. You know, clarity, unexpected things. 
It's important to have fun at this time with your partner as well, as sexuality is going to be a peak for you too. Unexpected pregnancy could arise, so if that's not what you want, take proper precaution, especially if you are with, I think I said Pisces, Capricorn, Libra, and Scorpio. I think, I can't remember what I said at the beginning, but um, yeah, so take proper precaution if that's not something that you want. Make sure you are channeling your passions into love and not war so that your relationships can become well balanced, all right? This is about your relationship finding freedom, finding its own unique way, and about balancing it out. So <clears throat> unexpected solutions to relationship problems may arise. So any relationship problem you may have had, it, you guys could have like the aha epiphany moment of how to fix it, all right? A Libra may come back into your life. This is a time of reconciling the past um, relationship issues that you may have had. Make sure you are taking the fair approach. You and a Libra have a chance to either be a power couple or a powerful dynamic duo when it comes to your community, all right? With Libra's fair and just intellect and your ability to shine, nothing can stop the both of you when you think outside the box, all right? So Leo, a Libra might be very significant significant to you around this time. All right. So now we're going to move on to Virgo. Virgo, this is happening in your, the Virgo risings. This is happening in your house. Of, um, it's happening in your sixth house, house of health and daily routine. The ruler here is Mercury. Um, and Virgo, <laughs> it's taking your Virgo-like energy here, all right? The planner, the nurturer, this is happening in your own house. So if you have a, if you've been feeling a little off lately, you might be feeling a little more like yourself again, but that's only for some because although Uranus screams freedom where you are structure and tasks, this can kind of kind of mix up the monotony a little bit here. This can give you the sense of feeling wonky. You can feel a little out of sorts because Uranus is coming in and wanting to free you from that daily routine, wanting to free you from that, um, that health problem or that health, you know, routine and get you on a much better, more focused path for you. All right. So you may be inclined to think outside the box. You may be reworking your daily routines, your daily habits, your daily health. Also, this is the house of pets. So um, something unique or spontaneous could come up with your pets. You could get a, take in a stray or, you know, have a pet dropped off on you or, you know, whatever the case may be here. Use your imagination. Think outside the box. You are mutable energy, so go with the flow. Just let it happen. Let it happen. Just go with the flow because you're mutable, all right? You can, you can be flexible in situations like that. Expect, expect that Mercury will help you diffuse any Mars-like energy that is around you, okay? By remaining calm and patient and communicating to your partner to defuse the tension when it might arise. A new health routine might start up. You might be starting a new health routine. I know it is January. A lot of people do that in January, but I feel like you are more prone to stick to it. And I feel like this is going to be a transform. It's going to be a lot different than your last health routine. Um, you, you can also expect some major disrupts 
disruptions or disturbances in your daily routine. This is because they want you to rework your daily routine. The universe wants you to rework your da daily routine. Uranus wants you to rework your daily routine so that you have more freedom, so that you are on a much healthier, happier path. And you're not so stressed out and so anxious all the time, Virgo. Another Virgo could be of significance to you. Set intentions around your health, your routine, and your pets. All right, so we're moving on to Libra. <clears throat> Libra, this is happening in your fifth house of children and fun and games. You are, your, your ruler is Venus, okay? And the fifth house ruler is the sun. So when we have the sun and Venus, it highlights love, all right? And if you think about love, that's like, you know, your what you value, who you truly value, you know? And then the sun is all about bright, passion, happy, fun times, right? Jolly, okay? So you put those two together. This is a good time for you, Libra. This new moon brings you a chance to shine in your relationships, all right? You have the chance to shine. Um, whereas you have always been the silent leader, now you are being encouraged and coerced by Uranus to step outside of your box, all right? To make your intentions known to, um, to your partner. In matters of love, it is better for you to go with the flow um, and stay away from any drama because this is a fun time for you. This is not a time for serious, um, you, you ain't got no drama, for, you ain't got no time for the drama, okay? This is a time for you to have fun with your partner, to enjoy your partner, to think outside of the box with your partner, to take on new creative ideas with your partner, okay? Um, any sex, oh, and your sexual tension may be high right now any anger you may feel just like i told who did i tell i think i told aries you need to transmute that into um sexual energy all right with your partner um or you know walk away from the drama um this is in the fifth house of children and we are talking uranus here people so if you're transmuting that energy into sex, um, know that possible unplanned pregnancy can happen. Just letting you know, it depends on what's in your chart, if you're fixed or not, and um, if you if you can have children or not. So um, yeah, just just know that if that is a probability, whether you want it or not, you know, take the proper precaution or you know go with the flow with it. All right. Um, bring a sense of fun and joy to your relationships. And I feel like you're going to be able to be more creative about this. You're going to be able to be outside of the box when it comes to, to your love life and to the people that you have fun with, with your kids, your family, whatever. As far as career, some windfall could happen to you. Um, could happen for you since Venus is in Pisces and it's sextiling Jupiter and Capricorn. So some type of um, windfall with your career, with money, um, something like that could happen for you. Maybe getting that dream job that you've always wanted or getting that promotion you de desperately need. Set intentions around adding more fun to your life around being true to staying true to your true self. Um, let others admire you for once. That's another thing. Let others admire you for once. Okay. You never let anybody admire you. You're, you know, you're always, you know, that person that's there to help everybody else out. So let people admire and help you out. Um, set the intention to stand out and shine this year. Set the intention to stand out and shine. The unexpected could be an unplanned pregnancy, like I said, or hearing someone around you, possibly a Leo's 
unplanned pregnancy. So it might not be directly yours. It could be somebody around you that has had an unplanned pregnancy that might be coming up. Um, also, unexpected creative ideas. Creative, creative, creative. Getting down with your creative side, Libra. That's what you're doing. Thinking outside the box creatively. So some type of creative project or creative endeavor might just pop into your head and you might just want to do it. A new hobby might pop up that you never knew you, you enjoyed and you're going for it. A Leo could be of great significance for you during this time. So, you know, like I said, family, friends, um, significant other, what have you, um, could be a work, a work, uh, colleague because it's, you know, Jupiter is sextiling Venus. So it could be a work situation here, but whatever the case may be, um, a Leo is going to have major significance for you around this new moon. All right. So now we're moving on to Scorpio, Scorpio rising, Scorpio moon, Scorpio suns. I should have said that with every one of these. Um, so this is happening in your fourth house of home and family roots, okay? So you take your rulers, Pluto and Mars, right? We've got the fourth house ruler of the moon. Um, <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Transformation and secrets, Scorpio. This is happening, like I said, in your fourth house of home. You can expect some tension around home and family, especially if you are with a cancer. You might find that you need to take a step back and harness that energy of Mercury and Mars, okay? Don't get upset. Harness the energy uh, of Mercury and think logically on how to dissolve the situation here. Transformation around your home might be highlighted. So whether it's changing homes, like moving somewhere, or changing up your home, revamping it, remodeling it, redecorating it, um, some of you Scorpios might find a secret or something hidden in the walls. Um, Or some of you might get lost and find the dream house of your, of your life. So that's another thing, finding the dream house of your life. In regards to love, sexual passion is also at a halt, all time high for you as well. Use that side of your Scorpio Mars power instead of becoming angered by what other people are doing. Especially when it comes to your partners, okay? With love, <sighs> with love, good communication comes in. A chance to transform your family for the better. So a lot of you might be working through family issues this year or this around this time. Um, some family secret might come to light as well. I think cancer had that too. Um, a hidden child might pop up to the surface or, you know, because you're bringing your Scorpio-like energy into there. And then we've got Aquarius and Uranus in there with the... <laughs> we've got Aquarius and Uranus. Um, I think Uranus... No, Uranus is in Taurus. But um, Uranus is going to be bringing about sudden changes this time. So... Yeah, expect the unexpected. There might be some nervous tension around your hopes, your dreams, what you value. Um, and since you are a fixed sign, this could happen to you. You could get the most hit. Set intentions um, to have a better home life. Well, not a better home life, but to make your home life better, more fruitful, to transform. Set that. Thank you, spirit. Set your intention to transform your home life here. A cancer may be of significance to you. All right. <clears throat> Aquarius, <laughs> the Aquarius new moon for Sagittarius. Sagittarius, we are on Sagittarius now. This is happening, happening in your third house of siblings and communication. And, um... 
your ruler is Jupiter, so there, you're going to have, I feel like, some luck around here. Um, but the house ruler is Gemini and Mercury. So communications with siblings and um, maybe getting on the same page with siblings with your certain beliefs is what I'm picking up and what I'm feeling. This is taking place in your... Oh, I already said that. Ah, uh, sorry. It's, okay, so a Gemini may be of big significance to you, especially if it's one of your siblings. You can um, expect maybe some reconciliation with siblings from the past that maybe they you don't have um, contact with. Um, if it's a Pisces, I would... I don't know about that. Um, I would like, you know... Put the feelers out there, okay? A cool, calm approach to communication is the best key here. Pay attention to what to what they are saying. Don't speak. Let them speak to you. All right? So whereas um, Gemini, Gemini is the diffuser, can um, the Gemini will be, like, seeing the broader picture and can actually communicate um, how to make the problem better. Sagittarius, you are meant not to communicate. You are meant to sit back and watch and pay attention to what the other person is saying. Listen to all the finer details of this matter. Go with the flow. Don't push too hard in, in areas where drama may arise. Like I said, be the silent person. Listen, take in the information. Pay attention to the little details on how people are feeling rather than the problem solver. Matters of love and sexual attention are high for you right now as well. Make sure you are listening to what your partner wants in the bedroom to unlock a more impassionate experience. Also, with Jupiter in Venus, and Jupiter being your ruler, unplanned pregnancy can happen. So if that's not what you want, take proper precaution. And like I said, it depends on what planets you have in that house, what is going on in that house for you. These are just general energies. The unexpected um, could be a call from a sibling you haven't heard from in a while or a matter that brings you both together, like an unexpected event that has to bring you guys together. Find out, and then um, unplanned pregnancy, this is also an unexpected, or finding out what your partner likes in the bedroom may come to you as a shock. Set intentions to listen more to what others have to say, because that's what the third house energy is about. It's about listening to others. It's about communicating thoughts and ideas, but paying attention to the small details. So um, set intentions to listen to gather more information on what people have to say so you can make more informed decisions. A Gemini is probably going to be of big significance to you. All right. So moving right along to the last one, we have the Capricorn. <laughs> we have Capricorn, this is you. This is happening in your second house of money and possessions. Now your ruler is Saturn and Taurus's ruler is Venus. And um, Uranus is in Ven is in Taurus right now, I believe. Yeah, Uranus is in Taurus right now. Um so when it comes to your house of possessions and money, expect major upheavals or major changes. Expect the unexpected. There could be sudden windfalls for you with your possessions, with your money, or it may be saying that you need to um, invest wisely around this time. Work and status might be of big significance to you as well. Your money and what you value is going to be highlighted here. You can expect in fluctuations in your money or a windfall of some kind, like I just said, pertaining to love or money. Your love life will be blessed as Jupiter sextiles Venus in Pisces. Understanding your partner and what you value in them 
um, will go a long way and create that like little lovey-dovey atmosphere. So, um, <laughs> and I know because I'm a Capricorn moon and I'm not like that at all. Um, but Capricorn, this is going to be a chance for you really to express your feelings. With Uranus here in the second house, all right, and with Taurus being all about love and possessions and stuff like that, Capricorn, this is one of the best times for you to actually let your emotions out. Let Talk to your partner in a kind, kind calm tone manner communicate communication is going to be key here um communicate your emotions to your partner this is going to set it up for a nice romantic lovey-dovey atmosphere Capricorn, I know you don't like to hear that because anything to do with emotion is, ah, but this is what Uranus is doing. It is taking us outside our comfort zone so that we can set ourselves up for success this year. Um, you also might find with Mercury sextiling Mars that your partner is more supportive of your feelings, of your ideas, of your emotions in general. So opening up will really, um, your partner will be really receptive to that, especially if they're a Pisces, because that's blessed, or a Taurus. With Jupiter in your sign, unplanned pregnancy could happen if you are with a Libra, if you are with a Libra. All right, Pisces or a Taurus. <laughs> so, yeah, expect the unexpected in regards to money and romance and or relationship events, sudden windfalls or sudden communication. It set intentions around money, possessions and love. And like I said, a Taurus person could be of significance or a Pisces person. Okay, well, that's all I got for the Zodiac reading part. I just want to say, um, make sure you're setting your intentions for what you truly, now these are just, gen, those were just general. So just make sure you're setting your intentions for what you truly, truly want to do. Whatever it is that scares you, that you're afraid to jump outside of your box with, because Uranus is in Taurus right now, okay? So, Taurus is about possessions, Taurus is about money, Taurus is about, you know, love and value, and we are being asked to jump outside of that box, all right, with this Aquarius new moon, to bring more stability in those areas, okay? So make sure that you, whatever it is that you're afraid of, but you think is kind of cool, but you're afraid of doing it, and you are like trying to, you're trying to talk yourself into it, do it. Set the intention to do it, okay? Because that's going to make you successful. Whatever you're afraid of, uh, whatever your desire is, you're afraid of it. You're afraid of acting on it. So act on it as long as it's good, as long as it's positive. Okay, people. All right. So new moon ritual. This is what I always do. I write down what I want to bring into my life on a piece of paper, you know, on a piece of paper. I want to bring in love. I want to bring in money. I want to bring in a new job. Okay, whatever. Write it down on a piece of paper. Say it, what you wrote down, and then actually take a moment and feel what it would be like to have that. All right? Really feel what it would be like to have that. Live in the now live as this has already happened for a minute or two live in that all right and then what you're going to do is you are going to fold because this is a new moon you're going to fold the paper towards you three times so and you're going to say your three intentions i always like to do things in three because i think of the trinity and i think of the 
triangle. So I like to do things in three. So three intentions. And you say it. The first intention, I want to bring this towards me. Flip it. The second intention, I want to bring this towards me, whatever that intention is. And then the third, say the third intention and say, I want to bring this towards me. All right. And then, you know, if you're in a southern state and the ground is um, not completely frozen, take it outside, bury it, ask your angels to bless it, ask your angels to bring it in for you. All right. Now, if you are in the northern hemisphere and it is you, the ground is frozen and you can't do it, um, if you have a house plant, plant it in the house plant. Um, you can burn it. You can burn it. And then say, I'm releasing these intentions up to the universe and um, you can put the ash in a house plant or you can throw the ash outside on the ground and say, I'm planting these seeds of intention. All right. Do not flush the, the ash. If you flush the ash, you're flushing your intention away. So make sure you're like, so, cause it's like the whole thing with setting your intention is setting the intention what it symbolizes, okay? You're burying your seeds of intention so that you can reap them later on down the road. All right, and that's all I got for you. This is a very long video. I hope you got something out of that. Um, if you did, please leave me a comment in the, section, in the comment section below. Um, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to get more videos from me in the future, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, I hope you have an amazing Aquarius new moon. Bye.